Good afternoon, everybody. I just wanted to address something on the channel real quick, and then I'll get on to what you came on here to watch, a book review. You've noticed that for the past two or three weeks, I've been releasing a video every single Tuesday. And quite clearly, up in the banner, it says that I do book reviews, fantasy and science fiction, every other week. Here's why that happened, and here's why I'm going back to every other week. Back in February, I got swamped with like three or four different stories all at the same time, and I read them all, I made a video for each one, I put it online, and then noticed that my backlog of content stretched almost two months, and I decided that I didn't want that to be the case. I only want to have maybe a month, maybe two weeks of content, that way if someone recommends a book again, they don't have to wait a month and a half to get the review. Yeah. So I purged all the backlog and you guys will get to see the reviews every other week now going forward. And by purged, I mean like I, I got it all out there. I didn't just read stuff, record a video, put it online and then not post it. Who does that? Anyway. Welcome guys! Today we're going to be reviewing the book Moxieland by Lauren Bukes. This book details the story of four young 20s individuals in South Africa. They are Toby, Laredo, Tendeka, and Kendra. Laredo and Kendra are females. Tendeka and Toby are males. Toby is basically a YouTuber. He is basically a streamer who is completely full of himself. He records everywhere he's going, all of his um, interactions with women, both privately in the bedroom and when he's out on the streets, um, the drugs he does, and his favorite of all, who thankfully doesn't spend much time in the story, his mother talking to her and how much he hates her. Anyway, that's him. Um, he's a little bit, a little bit crazy, a little bit wild. He's, and his sections of the book are written as if he's talking to the camera and you are the camera. It's an interesting writing style and the character was written very well, but he wasn't exactly my favorite, but I could see a lot of people liking him for who he is. Kendra. Kendra is an up-and-coming artist that in this far-off year, in this high-tech futuristic society, she only takes photos with real film. She loves like the imperfections of the film and the, the darkroom process of it. She, that's just what she likes. And she likes to take pictures of interesting people doing very boring things, but in interesting angles. For example, one of her artworks, she took a picture of a drag queen, but you can only see the drag queen from here down, and they're turned to the side. They're smoking, so you could see the cloud, the clouds, the cigarette smoke, and you can see only half of their skirt, because like the photo stops just below this person's knees. She's kind of very... She, She's an art geek, pretty much, um, but she's a low-key art geek. What makes her special, though, is that she got an injection by a corporate entity that attracts her, but it also addicts her to this one special drink. They call it Ghost. It sounds like it's something between a Bud Light and a Mountain Dew cross-hybrid. She's supposed to be one of, like, the sponsor babes that everywhere she goes, she drinks the drink, she does cool stuff. Well, I mean, stuff that a corporate place and an advertiser would think is cool enough. She does these things, she drinks the drinks, and for like three months, she's going to be the face of the drink. The drink is called Ghost, if I mention it later. She also is dating, not dating, this real jerk that is... He's pretty emotionally manipulative. Like, he's a thing, but he's not a thing with her. Like, he'll bounce between her and another girl. Whoever is, like, the most popular and making the most money 
he'll like show affection to, but then as soon as they drop down a bit, he'll jump over to the other one. Great A jerk. Uh, I'll mention him again in the trigger warning. Anyway, that's Kendra. Let's talk about Tendeka. He sees all these street kids, he sees all these individuals that they do one thing wrong, and they get cut out of society for either 24 hours or forever, depending on the infraction. Imagine being in our current reality if suddenly you had no cash, and you had no credit card, you had no keys, you have no phone, no internet. That's how in trouble you are in this society if they take away your cell phone usage for either 24 hours or forever. It's terrifying to Tendeka, and also, if you are, say, in a bar, you have one too many drinks, and you say something you shouldn't have, and a fight breaks out, they call the police, the police come, they activate your phone, and your phone is a taser. It will tase you if you're in trouble. That, that got me. I thought that was like, whoa, that's no bueno. Anyway, so Tendeka, he sees this whole system, and he says, I want to change it. He meets up online with this person called Skyward Asterisk. Like, the asterisk is the, the symbol, not the word. And they slowly nudge him to, first it's like, oh, hack into an automated billboard. Oh, paint these murals. But then they slowly push him to do, like, more and more extreme things. And... I can't say much more about that without getting into the spoilers. But that's Tendeka. Think of him as the super activist. With a good heart, good cause. The last main character is named Lorado. She is... She works at a company that she keeps track of internet traffic and she does cybersecurity things. She quasi knows Toby. Just enough that she can hack into, make a back door for a billboard, and deactivate the security system around a billboard, that at some point during the story, Toby, Tendeka, and one or two others decide to go and sabotage the billboard, put up some we are the people, we are the world style thing. She has aspirations for more, but She's kind of stuck with this office crush dude who just won't leave her alone, and he means well. Compared to Kendra's thing, he's much more honest, genuine, like, he likes her, but he's he's not good for her career-wise, and she's kind of, like, stuck with him, and she doesn't really like that. But she's trying to escape her past and trying to hack her way into a better future. So those are the four characters. Living in this world where if your phone goes dead, then there goes your wallet, there goes your subway pass, there goes your taxi pass, your house keys, and of course, traditionally, your phone. You have an art person who's going off trying to build her portfolio, but gets, but crosses paths with the activist, who crosses paths with the streamer to get out publicity, who crosses paths with the tech person to make sure that no identities are revealed, but also so that it gets out like as far as it can without the wrong kind of censorship happening. It's a fun story. And once you get to the end, you walk away thinking, this was really worth my time. But when you have four characters and they're all having to have their time in the sun, there tends to be moments where you're like, okay, but what happens next? You have, let's say you have a chapter where Tendeka does something and Skyward says, hey, you should go do that thing. You really want to do that thing. And it cuts off and you're like, but did he do the thing? Then you have a chapter of Toby talking about drugs and sex and all this stuff. And then you have a chapter where Kendra is having her own issues with with the dude. It's like, okay, these are all very interesting things, but if you get hooked on one particular character, it can be a touch annoying to read through the other chapters. 
but don't worry too much about it because each character is having like a very interesting plot point. But once it gets ramped up towards the end, especially especially with Lorado, I found myself having to be very, very patient with what's going on with Kendra and what's going on with Toby. So if you are an adult over the age of 18, I give this book five out of five stars. Absolutely enjoyed it and think it pretty much should be read by a whole bunch of people. The characters were understandable. I found that Lorado and Kendra were the most enjoyable, but that could just be because those are the females, I'm a female. If you're like really into streaming culture or you're a diehard activist, you might lean more towards liking Toby's or Tendeka's things. Perhaps. That being said, I mentioned before that Kendra is in a relationship with, his name is Jonathan. In, in Mrs. Book's advertisement of this book, like when you go to her website and read the blurb, she says that Toby is the narcissistic one. I kind of think it's Jonathan that's a narcissistic one. Yes, of course, there could be two people with narcissism in a book, but like Jonathan does it way worse. Every step he takes, every move he makes, everything he does to help Kendra always has an ulterior motive, and it is insidious and awful. It's... <sighs> she did her research, Mrs. Books did, when she wrote this book on interpersonal violence, especially the emotional type and on manipulation in a dating relationship because oh man jonathan is good it never gets physical it never gets um violent but it, there's very much a you will do what i say or i'll wreck your career style relationship going on between these two if that's a soft spot for you i would move on to a different book uh, if you're the type of person that's like, sex before marriage is not your thing, might skip the last chapter between Toby and Kendra. Um, just know that it happens for like the very last page of the book because something happens in the very last page and if you don't know that happened, you're gonna be like, what? But it, it makes sense. So, with the trigger warnings, I give this book like a 3 out of 5 for family friendliness. The sex scene, the language, Toby swears like a sailor, forgot to mention that earlier, sorry, he swears like a sailor, and the relationship between Kendra and Jonathan. With those three things, I give this a 3 out of 5 stars for family friendliness. If you still want to read this book, I'll have a link in the description below where you can go and pick it up. Uh, if you don't, I didn't get paid for this. I just review the books that I read for fun. So, this is the cover of the book I got, but when I looked on the website just before recording this, I noticed that the cover is now a pink bunny from a video game that's inside the book, which maybe makes a little more sense. Tune in next time in two weeks for the next book, guys. I'll see you later. Bye.